to get more updates, tips and easy instructions on how to do everyday registrations, tasks and chores in Zambia. Click on the red subscribe button below. Lusaka is the capital city of Zambia. Not only is it the busiest town in Zambia, but it's also the most populated town with more than 1.2 million people. That means there are a lot of cars in Lusaka. People from other towns may be afraid of driving in Lusaka and new drivers might be nervous. So in this video, we will take you for a drive in Lusaka and we will share some live tips and demonstrations that will show how to drive safely in Lusaka. We will look at how to join busy roads, join and leave intersections with flyover bridges, drive through junctions without traffic lights, drive through junctions with traffic lights, drive in two and three way lanes, uh, how to change lanes, how to drive through town or CBD, and how to drive through roundabout or traffic circles. And what to do when you are involved in an accident, let's say you scratch someone's car or your car is scratched. While we're demonstrating driving in Osaka, we'll be applying the 10 basic rules of driving of the Zambian Highway Code and the Smith system mainly used in the Western countries. Let's start by looking at how you can join busy roads. Well, Lusaka roads are very busy and sometimes it might seem impossible to join. But remember the third and fourth row of uh, the Zambia Highway Code. So interpret the traffic situation correctly before you act and exercise patience and hang back when necessary. So this is it. Be patient and relax. No matter how busy the road is, Eventually, a chance will come which will allow you to join, just like we can see in the video. Don't bother about impatient drivers honking behind you. Remember, 30 seconds or one minute of waiting to join a road may save you hours of reporting to the police, days of waiting for a vehicle to be repaired by uh, a panel beta if you're bashed, and can save it in your life, so be patient and interpret the traffic situation. And in line with the Smith system, row number three and five, keep your eyes moving, make sure you are seen. So be alert when joining and ensure that the car coming in the road you are joining can see you and is in a position to slow down just in case you fail to gain speed. So we have joined Los Angeles Boulevard, Cha 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 Road, and now we are joining Kafir Road. So once we notice there is no traffic, we join. And then this is Chindo Road, just from Melissa. So we'll be joining slowly. And once we have a chance, we join the main road. For junctions without traffic lights, we follow the highway code. It says for four-way junctions, all must stop and give way to each other on a first-come basis. So we want to apply row two and five of the highway code to concentrate and drive with care, give courtesy to other road users. So this is a junction between Twin Palm Road and Chindo Road. So stop until the other vehicles we found pass. It's a junction between uh, Chindo Road and uh, Leopazio Road. So the other vehicles found me, we'll go ahead. It's a junction between Tabo Mbeki, the junction and Tabo Mbeki Road. So stop and, uh, well, that car found us, but anyway, want to road, give courtesy to other road users. We don't want to cause accidents. So we'll be patient. And then this is a junction that goes to Chawama, where there is choppies. So we'll approach with caution until we cross. For traffic lights, it's straightforward. Red means stop, 
Green means go. We just need to watch out for filter lanes. The record says that traffic lights only use a filter lane if you're going to turn in the direction of the arrow. So if the arrow gives green to the left, you can go left. If it gives green to the right, you can go right. So we are now in um, Mosotunia Road. We want to go to Lake Road. So we're going to be patient and wait until the right, the left arrow gives green. And there we go. Gives green, so it means we can go. So we are in um, Leopard Zero Road. It's not giving us, only those going left can go. This is Church Road and Independence. And then this is Lake Road and uh, Leopard Zero Road. So we are going to wait until the right arrow gives green. That's when we can go. So, but before it gives green, we just have to be patient. So just take note that if you are turning left or right, if the traffic light has arrows, you have to wait until the arrow, the green arrow comes on. That's when you can turn. So it applies to most traffic lights in Osaka, but you need to take note of Cairo Road. So when you're in Cairo Road, there are four lanes. If you're from Cairo Road going to Church Road, there are four lanes. So the two left lanes, are going straight into Cairo Road, but the two right lanes are turning into Church Road. So if the traffic lights give green, they're telling the two left lanes to go straight into Cairo Road. But for us who are going into Church Road, you have to wait until the right arrow comes on. So there it is. When it comes on, we can now turn into church road. When driving in two and three rail lanes, we want to apply rule six of the highway code that talks about adapting your speed and never exceeding the speed limits because you want to avoid collisions. And where traffic officers can be found at most unsuspecting places with speed traps when you exceed, when you exceed speed limits. I just want to apply a tour of the Smith system. Leave yourself a note. Make sure there is enough space between your car and the car in front of you so that you have space to maneuver in case of anything. And plan ahead your exit of the highway. Last minute maneuvers can be dangerous. So if you're going straight, take the middle lane. If you're going right, take the right lane. If you're going left, take the left lane. So this is Kafir Road. You know I want to exit Kafir Road, going to somewhere in Kamala. That's the reason I've taken the right lane because I know I'll be turning to the right. So make sure you don't exceed the speed limit and uh, make sure that there is enough space between me and the car in front of me. So now I'll take the filter lane so that I can go right. This is... Um, Independence Avenue, since I'm going straight, I'll take the middle lane. And if I want to change lanes, I'll make sure that uh, there isn't any other car approaching fastly in the same lane that I am in. And this is Greatest Road, somewhere near Manda Hill. I know I'm going straight, so I'll make sure I keep the middle lane. Of course, if I'm going right or left, I'll take the right lane, but in this case, I'm going straight and making sure that there is enough space between me and the car in front of me, just in case I break.
So I've taken the right lane because I know I'll be taking, I'll be turning uh, right. I'll be turning to the right, going somewhere to our kids. And then uh, when going to fly over bridges, you want to be cautious, especially as you are exiting the flyover bridge. So this is the flyover bridge along uh, Los Angeles Boulevard. That's the, the road that goes to Adsababa. Might correct me if I'm wrong of the name of the road. So as I meet the junction, I want to be careful because if you're not careful, you can bash the car that's approaching from the other lane. And this is Kafir Road. To change lane, I want to make sure that the lane is free. And since I'm going straight, I'll keep the middle lane. But I want to remember that I, want, I must make a decision. Uh, let's say if I want to turn right or left beforehand so that uh, it will be easy for me to exit the highway. When going through a roundabout, the highway code says when there are more than three lanes at the entrance to a roundabout, use the most appropriate lane on approach and through it. So that's what we'll be doing. We are now approaching uh, at suburb roundabout. And uh, the ones in the roundabout in the traffic circle usually have the right of way. So since not staying in the roundabout, I'll take the outermost lane. This is Kablonga roundabout. So I'll take the left lane since I'm not staying in the roundabout. I'm planning to exit it as soon as I go through it. But uh, different rules apply if you're planning to stay in the roundabout or traffic circle. In this case, I want to go around i'm staying in this circle at kaplonga roundabout so I'll take the right innermost lane and then i'll wait until i have chance and then i'll enter the traffic circle and remember when you're in the traffic circle roundabout you don't have to change lanes so once you're in the circle and you're about to leave you indicate so I indicate as I leave the traffic circle. When driving through townships, I want to apply row number 6 and number 8 of the highway code. Adapt your speed. So you want to be patient and move at a slow speed. Don't overspeed. You'll find a lot of traders along the street and children can come from nowhere. So sometimes in uh, townships, there are high volumes of people, so there are people crossing the road, people walking beside the road, some walk very close to the road, and then there are also people with bicycles, so you want to be very careful 
and take it easy as you drive. And then rule number eight also says use your horn considerably. So warn pedestrians, especially those going the same direction as you, as some may not be able to see you. So this is a road uh, in Chawama. Yeah. It's the one that passes just right in front of Choppies. So we want to take it easy and uh, be very observant, especially of those people alongside the road. And another thing to be cautious about is minibus drivers. So as you drive in the townships, you sometimes find minibus drivers. Now, minibus drivers can stop, turn, or even reverse without any warning to pick passengers. So whenever they see a passenger, they can stop or make a U-turn. So you want to exercise extra caution if you're driving behind a bus. So when you're scratched or bashed, get details like number plate and name of the person driving the car that scratched you. And if possible, get a contact of a person who witnessed the accident and get a few photos of the accident scene. Some people can change statements in their favor abruptly. And avoid word of mouth agreements. Many who are wrong might entice you not to report the accident saying that they will fit the bill of the repair. But it is possible that they might disappear or stop picking calls. So even if the person at home is ready to pay, to pay for repairs, report to the police and have a signed agreement if they want to do repairs from their own pocket. And also ensure that they report the accident to the police as soon as possible. Remember, it's an offense not to report an accident to the police. If you make a verbal agreement with the person, and the person does not comply by fixing your car. If you report the matter to the police late, after days or weeks, you might be charged. And as of 2016, that charge was 450 kwacha. Hope this video was helpful. So please share some experiences and tips we left out in the comment section below. You might have left out a few things to do or a few tips. Please feel free to comment in the section the comment section below.